You know, when camouflage is worked correctly, you can actually be pretty invisible in certain situations. But you know what gives away your position real quick? Having a giant black gun sticking out of a bush while you're kind of sort of camouflage. So today we're going to solve that problem be by making a black gun into a not quite so dark black gun. Let's hop over to the other clip to see how. So we're here with the GR25 in the next clip. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, this is the, uh, the DMR that I was using in my last video, and we're going to paint it because it's looking awfully black. So you're going to need three different types of things for painting these guns. Number one, you're going to need to hook yourself up with some tape. Uh, this tape is going to mark off certain areas like the stuff that you don't want to get all painty. So you, the, most of this is pretty closed up. The tip of the barrel, I got some on there. Got some on the motor connection here just so it's easy to get to. And then the trigger, you really want to cover up the trigger quite well. Um, up next, you're going to need some vegetables, some foliage, if you will. So this stuff is used to uh, sort of pattern it while you're painting, and it will uh, really help in the breaking up of the image of the, the gun. Next up, you're going to need the stuff to paint with, and that's spray paint. So you're going to hook yourself up with some different colors. We got some dark green, we got some this, and we got some that. And those are the three colors that I'm going to be using to make this gun invisible. All right, so we're going to start off with this color. This is the color you're going to see the least. It's a nice light color, and it's the stuff that you're going to see when the sun's shining on, like, some dead leaves and stuff like that. That's going to be our base color. You're going to see that the least. Up next, we're going to do this olive green sort of color. That's one that you're going to see the most, because it's going to go over top of this color. And it's going to uh, show, like, you know, living stuff, like stuff that's not dead. And then this color is going to be the most dead of all the stuff, and branches and stuff like that. We're just going to do little flicks of that, just to give a little bit, a little bit of pop the color and those uh, those three together are, <coughs> are gonna make the gun invisible all right so tip number one for painting your guns with this uh, type of spray paint make sure you get ultra flat that stuff won't shine at all because if it shines then there's no point in painting it we're using a, ca a ca camouflage by Krylon it's an okay brand so that's what I use for everything and a tip for you guys to make sure that you shaken it shaking it up well enough as you start to feel the bumps on the bottom of the little rattle can thing in the inside once you start to feel those bumps on the bottom, it shook up good, you can start applying it to the, to the gun. So once again, we're using this light color, we're going to cover the entire thing in this color. Um, let's get to it. Alright, so you see I did a nice little light coat. You don't want to just cover it in paint because then it's going to take a long time to dry. And if you don't let it dry all the way, uh, the next coat that you put on, it's going to get all ripply and it won't look good. So, uh, yeah, now we're just going to let this dry for a little bit, find something to do, possibly eat a pizza. Alright, so now that one of the sides of this gun is uh, nice and beige and dry, we can do the other side. Now, just an important little point here. I don't know what the rules are for specific countries with orange tips. In Canada, you don't eat them, so we can paint over them but I don't know what it's like for the U.S. and for different countries. So double check before you paint over anything with your, uh, your country's or area's laws for airsoft. So up next here, we're going to start adding the vegetables. Now, I'm using some of these, uh, these ferns and some, uh, some of this, this, whatever this is called, um, tree, because this is uh, sort of the natural, the natural area that I live in. This is what it looks like. Whatever the natural area that you live in looks like, use that type of stuff on your gun. Um, you want to cover quite a bit of it. Um, you know, you got to just make it look natural. Like bushes and stuff like that are thick in real life. So you got to got to really bush, bush up your gun. All right, so now you got a bunch of your vegetables laid out on your gun. You're going to want to do nice light passes. Now you want this to fall nice and straight down onto the paint, not at an angle, because then you'll get underneath the foliage and it won't look good. You want to go straight down on top, and if you get some spread going on, that's fine, that happens. An important part of this process is you take the stuff off right away. You don't want this stuff to dry to your gun 
because then you got little bits of stuff stuck to your gun after you're painting. And that's, that's just not what you're into. That's not what you want. You want fake foliage, not real foliage. So already it's starting to look good. Once that dries up a little bit, we'll put on some highlights with the dark colors, and it'll be looking pretty okay. Wouldn't it be low lights? I want Putting some lights on it. Big LED lights. <laughs> Alright, so next with this darkest color, you're going to want to add in some shadows. Now, shadows have nice broken up edges, and they sort of fan out nice and easy. They don't, like, no hard edges. That's, that's, what, you, that's what you don't want. So you're going to take this, and on an angle, do a, little, do a little bit like that. Now, you see I got some really dark the fine edges, that's not what you want. This is why you do a couple of little practice ones. You're gonna, something like that, that's getting pretty good. Just like that. You see how it's, it's, it's dark, but it doesn't give really defined edges? That's what you want. So you're gonna go up to, to the edge of one of, your, one of your little bits here, like this right here, right at the back of the, the gun, actually. Jack, come, come around. And you're gonna wanna do exactly what you just did, just Give it some, give it some nice, uh, some nice, nice shadows. There you go. Nice broken up little shadow right there. I'll do one right at the tip of the gun as well. Like that. And then I might, uh, I might add one in right here. And then a little bit right at the back here. Uh, I'll put it right behind, right behind the trigger. There you go. Just want to give a little bit of difference in color. Then once this is all done, you don't want to have really defined edges between the light and the green. So you're going to go over really lightly in green. I'll do that right now. And it should sort of close everything up. So super high up. Just give it, give it a nice... Nice little squirt. It closes everything up nicely. And that's one side done. We're going to do the exact same thing to the other side, and we'll show you guys the finished rifle. Alright, so there you go. It's got some camo on it. Like I said, in my environment, I want most of the dark green, so that's what we had here. We got a little bit of other stuff to break up sort of the, the image of the rifle here. But if you've done everything right, you should have paint only where you need it to be, and not where you don't need it to be. So I hope you guys uh, had some fun watching this, a couple laughs, but also in informational is what I was aiming for. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, also make sure you check out our website, www.housegamers.ca. Get some patches, some stickers, and soon, maybe, some t-shirts. Ooh, spooky, right? Yeah, alluding to the future. Alright, we'll see you guys on the next one.